What's up, everybody? How are we doing this evening? I am super excited, man. I am super pumped for this. This is going to be a lot of fun. I feel, I feel uh, amped up, man. I feel like I got some uh, adrenaline going. I feel like I'm doing a live show, like, you know, like a concert or whatever. I've been wanting to do this <clears throat> for a while now, and I'm stoked, man. I'm, I'm super pumped. So I'm just uh, getting everything squared away, getting the chat lined up over here. Colin, what's up, dude? How you doing, man? Colin, the man. Leo, 2300. What's up, dude? How are you? How is everybody doing tonight? So real quick, I'm just going to get warmed up and get the camera Anthony, what's up, dude? Get the camera angle decent. And then uh, we'll go from there. I'm using the Orange Rocker Verb 50 Mark II behind me with the Almighty Precision Drive. And uh, yeah, just gonna warm up a little bit, do a little bit of A majoring riffing, and then uh, we'll get into the topic of today's video. I hope you guys that are tuned in are gonna take this, I don't wanna say seriously, but I do want you guys to, uh, you know, take it as if it, as if it, as if it was a class, because I got, you know, my whole lesson plan right here mapped out and I got a lot of stuff to talk about so I hope you guys are going to be um you know enga engaged and, and interested because I got a lot to show you guys on how to build some cool chords all right so let me just warm up real quick let me shake off the cobwebs a little bit It's cold here in Philly, man. I'm getting my, my hands are cold. My hands are chilly. I'm, I'm a little, uh, a little rusty here, but I hope everybody's doing all right tonight. All right, let's talk. Let's get into the, uh, into the chat. See who's here. Slug up. Hey, Ray, it's midnight here in the UK worth staying up. No doubt. Hey, awesome, man. I appreciate you, um, taking me over to sleep. That means a lot. We're here to learn. We're here to learn about some cool chords, man, and some cool, um, ideas in terms of theory on how to apply it in several different tunings, all right? So I'm just gonna um, just let people kind of tune in a little bit more here, just let the um, the audience build up and then, you know, we'll, we'll get started because I don't want to dive in too deep without having a substantial amount of people just in case, you know, people aren't here right at the dot. You know, I'll be a little lenient. Um, but uh, yeah, today we're gonna be going over, you know, how to build a chord, what is comprised of a chord, what is a number one tool that people use, at least that I use, um, to find out the intervals and the chords and stuff like that. And it's funny, a lot of my students, you guys know who you are. I saw Colin was in here and Michael will probably be in here as well. Um, this is going to be mostly review for you guys. And you'll be hearing a lot of, um, you know, a lot of similar themes and motifs about the stuff that I'm talking about as I continue to go on here. But yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a review for you. So you'll be ahead of the game. But then I'm also just going to incorporate how to build some chords um, in standard. This is standard tuned guitar just because I have to teach... I have to teach <clears throat> theory in, in one particular language, and standard is the, the traditional way to talk theory. But what nobody does, and what I'm going to do tonight, is gonna, I'm going to teach theory in C-sharp standard, drop B, and drop A, um, with a 6 and 7 string. Because nobody ever talks about theory in, in drop tunings in metal, and everybody's just always talking about it in standard. And I understand now why that is. Um, you know, you got to speak one language. But um, nobody ever takes the next step and teaches it in... in in lower tunings and like applies it in in the way that you and I like to listen and play music that is you know heavy metal and detuning what have you so I want to continue to do that and and explain it how it all makes sense in lower tunings because this right here like you know like, like that's all well and good that's not metal and that that's you know what theorists and teachers music teachers always teach is, is standard tuning and open chords so I'm going to do all that. I'm going to calibrate it all for you. So it's going to be a decent lesson, decent lesson in length. And, um, you know, I, I will say right now, I'm not going to be doing too much Q&A right now um, as it pertains to anything other than what I'm talking about. Um, if, you have a, if you have something that's on your mind, by all means, you're more than welcome to ask it. I don't necessarily mean I'm going to get to it because I'm going to be focusing on what I'm doing. But, you know, if you want to help out the channel anyway, Super Chats are always welcome. I love you guys that, that give those in. I'm not asking for them. They're not mandatory, um, but they certainly do help out. And if at any point in time you feel compelled enough to uh, want to help me out and help out this channel, help out our channel, 
you know, by all means, that would mean the world to me. And if you have a question, you know, you can you can attach it to said super chat if you want. But again, just just want to lay the ground rules for how this evening's gonna work. All right. Um, but yeah, man, I think uh, let's see, we got thirty some people watching right now. Okay, I got twenty. 22 people. Decent amount. So why don't we just uh, say hi to the chat one more time and then we'll get going, alright? Patrick, what's up? Danny, hey, how you doing, man? Tim, hey, Tim, how you doing, man? You got any more guitars you want to send me? No, I'm just kidding. Um, Tim Tim sent me the Schechter Apocalypse, I believe it was, in early early to mid-2019. And uh, he's been a huge supporter of the channel. I appreciate you, man. James, you're awesome, dude. Nanobot, what's up, brother? How are you? Doing alright. Holding it down. Gonna get my teaching hat on, if you will. And I want to enlighten you guys and talk about some of, uh, you know, some of uh, the things that I love, that is theory. Can't decide which Neil Diaz play PN to buy, NamUs or NTS. Not going to answer that. That's not what this is about. That's not what the stream's about. That's for another, that's another stream, an Ask Ray episode. Um, I want to stay focused on the topic at hand because you guys know me, I'll ramble on forever about stuff. So give me some nice chords to use without the pinky finger. I have one that's, but it's crooked and doesn't function well. I'll do my best, man. I, I'm a big advocate fan of the pinky finger. But, uh, you know, I'll do my best to try to work around that stuff, all right? That was Paul's awesome. Thanks. Ready for the jazz, jazzy metal chords. Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's get going. I got 30 people now. While, while you're here, guys, one last thing. Hit that like button. It just helps out. It's just real easy. Just take your mouse. Just please like it. Reason being is I want to continue to give these theory classes in courses, if you will, you know, you know, just, uh, you know, snippets, if you will, because the more that I get engagements with these, the more likes, the more comments, the more interaction between you and I, the more it just helps out. And it allows me to know that, Hey, you guys like this, or you guys don't like that. It just gives me a nice, um, you know, sense of awareness about what you guys like. All right. So just please hit that like button while you're there. It just takes one second. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Let's get in two chords, all right? Unique metal chords. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So for now, I'm in standard tuning. Just got to talk about it and talk about this in standard. But don't worry, I'm going to be switching two to three different tunings, all right? C sharp standard, drop B, and drop A with the seventh string, all right? So it's all going to make sense. I just got to get through it on standard to speak one language. Let's roll with it. So chords. Chords are based off of a couple things, and they're all kind of interchangeable. The one thing that I always tell my students that sign up via Patreon is everything in music is comprised of the major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. Now, again, not the most metal thing in the world, but it is music and metal uses that. It's called solfege syllables, meaning do, re, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So that right there is this. I'm going to play everything right now in A major and the whole, the whole lesson is going to be in A, which is the fifth fret on the low E. That's just like my favorite place to teach and it kind of just helps out, all right? So I hope you guys can see everything. I'm gonna raise my, so I'm not chopping my own head off. Just a little bit, there we go. Okay, cool, now we're, now we're cooking with gas. Here we go. All right, so everything in music is based off of this scale. I'm gonna play one octave. Again. That is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do, all right? And everything in music from death metal to thrash metal to pop music, to classical, to jazz, is all comprised off of not necessarily the A major scale, but just the major scale, any and all major scales, if that makes any sense. All right, and there's another scale called chromaticism, the chromatic scale, which means every single note on the keyboard on a piano, like that's chromaticism, whereas this is called a diatonic scale. Diatonic means you're playing of some key. And the big takeaway is you're emphasizing certain notes of this scale. You're just picking them out and going. All right, pretty easy to understand. And if at any point in time you guys get confused, I'll stick around at the end of the, the, the live stream and we'll answer some questions that pertain to this stuff. And I'll take breaks throughout once I hit major points or, as well. So if you have a question, just jot it down um, because I do see you guys chatting a little bit and I appreciate you, I really do, but I don't want to just like, answer a question and then go back and forth. It'll take too long, all right? So, everything in music is based off of that scale, the major scale, and that's one octave. And as you guys pretty much know this, scales and music and notes theoretically go on infinitely. And it's just, we as humans can only hear so many um, uh, decibels, all right? And so the same thing applies to chords, all right? So when you're building a chord, like I'm gonna do a classic, 
I'm gonna do this is my clean tone. I'm just gonna use the the neck pickup for a clean, just so I'm not blasting the rock reverb for this stuff. And there's a six string bar chord A major scale. You guys hear this a lot. Or an even more common one, A minor six string bar chord. That's in Stairway to Heaven. So this chord right here, you know, this example, is em emphasizing certain notes of that scale. And I'll show you just for, just so you guys have a, um, an idea of what happens. I'm going to play two octaves. You guys probably know this stuff. Oops. <laughs> Let me switch on my... All right, that, I gotta play it clean. Good enough, all right. Sorry about that, I flubbed it up a little bit on the first go round. So all of the notes in that scale are, are in this chord and vice versa. All right, roger that, but how does that apply to metal? Well, certain intervals, meaning the distance from one note to another makes up a certain sound that makes it heavy or makes it metal, if you will. All right, and so now when we're talking about metal chords, everybody that plays metal, I would say about 100% of people know the power chord. Everybody knows what a power chord is. If I said, hey, little Jimmy, you know, four-year-old, first time ever picking up a guitar, playing for a week, show me how to play Rocky Like a Hurricane, or, you know, um, get, I don't know, just like any, any, <laughs> any classic rock song, they'll just go like this. You know what I mean? Everybody knows power chords. And it seems like what the, the consensus is, is in 2020, Glenn Fricker talks about this all the time, is bands sound all the same now because everybody's kind of doing the same thing over and over. And that includes gear, but it also includes the notes that they're choosing to play and or not play. And so a lot of people, whether in standard tuning or drop A, sound like this. Of some, you know, this is a general consensus, but you know what I mean? Like if I'm genting, everybody's genting like this. You know what I mean? It's all the same chord, just re rinse, recycle, repeat. And everybody knows how to play a power chord. But just for the sake of, you know, the lesson, I'm, I'm just going to obviously lay it out for you. So there's two ways you can play a power chord in a traditional sense. You know, everything's going to be off the, the root for this lesson, by the way. So here's my A, and then I'm going to tuck right underneath the seventh fret on the A string, which is an E note. We know that, and then if we want, we know this as well as guitarists, we can tuck our pinky finger or we can bar the D string on the seventh fret, and that gives us the other octave of A. So it's really just stacking A's in between that E note. So it's A, E, A. And the reason why it's called a power chord is because of intervals. And the interval from A to E in music is called a perfect fifth. So if you ever see in tablatures or in chord charts or whatever, like when you're learning a song, if you see like an A5 chord, like it'll say letter A5, that means a power chord. And the reason being is because it's just A and then five. It's like stupid easy. It's like almost like too easy to be, you know, the correct thing, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so it's just called A5. And to double check that is to go back to that major scale that I showed you, that one octave. And it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five. So it's the fifth note of the major scale. And it's an E. So A, power chord. All right, that's just pretty much review for, I would say, the majority of us, okay? Um, and that's just, that's just what makes up a power chord, all right? So now, all of these notes in this major scale, they also have intervals. They also have names. This one's a perfect fifth. That means all the other ones have names. And I'm going to name, name them for you. All right. And the intervallic name is the name as it is related to the root note. Okay. So for example, root note, major second. Okay. And I'm just going to go in order. I hope you guys get this concept. So root note, major second. My, uh, let me start over. Root note, major second. Major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, perfect octave. 
Mm-hmm. Now we're back to square one. We're back to our root note. Just one octave higher, one pitch above where we started. And just so you guys know, the perfect fourths, perfect fifths, and perfect octaves are called perfects because they don't have um, any majors or minors. There's no such thing as a minor fourth or a minor fifth in a traditional sense. Now you can, you know, I guess technically flatten those notes, but then they become different names. All right. Um, if, for example, if you flatten a perfect fourth, it becomes a major third because there's only a half step in between major third and perfect fourth. And this is getting a little complex, but I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is just for the sake of continuing to move on to understand this stuff, there's only perfect octaves. There's no such thing as like a minor octave, you know what I mean? It's like it just doesn't exist. And then uh, perfect fourth and then perfect fifth, okay? And then just that's just all you have to know. They're just perfect because there's no major or minor. And the big takeaway is they're always major. So, for example, when I'm playing my major scale... <laughs> When I hit my perfect fourths and fifths, they're major because they fit in the major scale. I hope that makes sense. Like, this is a perfect fourth is never really minor. It's in a minor scale, but just think of it as, as major. It's a little confusing, and as you dive into scales and modes and stuff like that, you understand a little bit better. Um, my students kind of get that concept. That was a little, I had one, one kid, um, one kid, he was like 40 years old, <laughs> one <laughs> student of mine. Um, had, had trouble understanding that concept, all right? So, everything in music is based off of the major scale and everything is based off of intervals. So now, let's get into what this video is about, this stream is about, building chords, all right? So, I'm gonna use just, I, I wanna go into what, what the other notes are before I start building chords, I have to, because then I'll start, being, I'll, I'll start naming uh, words that you guys don't know yet, because I haven't said them, okay? So, in be- I'm going to go the ones that we didn't hit. Okay, so here's all the ones we did hit. Well, we see there's spaces in between these notes that we don't hit. And those are minor second. That's a minor second. Minor third. Minor third, right there. Tritone, this is a good one. Ooh, listen to that. We're going to get to that one. Minor sixth. Minor seventh, and that's it. Those are the only ones we haven't hit in the major scale. So it's minor second, minor third, tritone, minor sixth, and minor seventh. And a good way to remember that is all the ones that are minor aren't in the major scale. It's kind of common sense, right? You know, there's no such thing as a minor note in a major scale. So minor second, minor third, minor seventh, and tritone. And tritone is just in between perfect fourth and fifth. And that's the Black Sabbath note. That's an evil one. We'll get to that one, all right? (laughs) That one's a good one. All right. So, all of those intervals are in this little box right here. All of the notes right there are all the notes in music. There's only 12 notes in music, and they're all right here. We're hitting some, but we're also not hitting some. If I played a minor scale real quick... Oh, that's A minor now. One octave. Guess what? We played seven notes plus the octave, so eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All the other notes that we didn't hit are all the major notes. It's like the opposite of the major scale. It's called the parallel uh, key, if you will. So, now that I've named all the intervals in relationship to the root note, that is A. Now... I want to ask you guys in the chat, I'm going to take a peek right now, I'm going to take a break. That's a lot of information. If you have any questions, anything that I've covered, please feel free. I'm going to scroll back up, just make sure if there's any glaring things that I could get to right now before I move on, I will. But then now I'm going to start to really dissect building chords and showing how these intervallic relationships, meaning the intervals, pertain to one another, okay? What what source did you mainly use to help learn theory? I went to school, um, so I'm, I'm currently a full-time student. Um, I went to a community college back home when I was getting out of the Army. I was getting all my surgeries, and now I'm currently a student at the University of the Arts in Center City, Philadelphia. Greetings, man. Love the time you're putting in, man, th- for these lessons. Hell yeah, man. I, 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 that's what I want. I want you guys to be understanding and, and, and getting something out of it because I'm not just doing this to, like, show how much I know, you know what I mean? I just want to help because I was once somebody that didn't know theory, and it's way easier than what it is. 
Okay, so far I'm keeping up. Thanks, man. All right, nobody's chimed in, so that's good. Good sign. I didn't see. Oh my god, I didn't see any. I don't get it. <laughs> Stop. Go back. <laughs> Unsubscribe. <laughs> okay, so now let's get into some chords. So now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start building chords by moving that perfect fifth because that's something that we know. We meaning, I don't mean any offense by any means, but like a more basic metal guitar player knows power chords. You know what I mean? I'm not, I, I'm not saying anybody's basic, like, as a, um, a lower, lesser intelligence. It's just, that's what people know in metal. So what would happen if I started playing around with that perfect fifth and just started moving it around in relationship to the root note, you know what I mean? Well, there's, there's my perfect fifth. Well, now, what if I went up a fret? Get, get some gain. That's a lot more interesting, interesting, and it's actually a lot more sour sounding compared to a perfect fifth. Listen, perfect, I'm gonna go perfect fifth, and then I'm gonna go up, which is in fact a minor six. So ready? Hear that? I don't know how well you can hear it through my, my, my cell phone here, but I think if you guys have a guitar, you know, yourselves, and you hear that, it's a lot more sour sounding, a lot more unique and interesting. It perks up the ear. It's not like the traditional, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a little interesting. That's like a, such a metal sound right there. And if I slide it down all the way to the F and I go 1 4, listen to that. That sounds evil as hell, man. So, what would I do? Let's, let's, let's build off of this. I like this sound. Let's say I'm, I'm trying to come up with something. I'm trying to write a riff, try to write a song. Let's come up with something. Well, we have two other fingers to play with, and this is something that Mark Holcomb does from Periphery, except he does it with his thumb and goes like this. I have big palms, little fingers, so <laughs> I kind of do it the opposite. So I'm going to throw that octave in from before, because here's a traditional power chord with the octave. Well, what would happen if I just re voice that and put the minor sixth in there so i'm going five eight seven hear that so there's that one little half step up adding a minor note into an epic chord epic meaning power chord you know like when i say epic a power chord is very i call it epic powerful hence the name it's like it's a stance you know it's a it's a uh, it's a um it's a statement, you know what I mean? Like, we're here. It's, we're an A, you mofo. You know what I mean? But like, if we put a minor six in there, just kind of change it up a little bit. It's like, whoa, what the hell is that? Something a little bit different. And if we wanted to, we could add our middle finger here. And that is actually a major third, but an octave up. And I don't want to go too far on that. But the concept is, just for now, if you're doing this stuff and we're going past an octave, we have more fingers to play with. It's thrown down somewhere. So listen to this. It's evil. It, it sounds dissonant. It sounds broken. It sounds bigger than just a plain old... You know what I mean? Like, listen to all that's going on. And imagine if you add more distortion and detune that. You're like, <laughs> we're rocking and rolling. You know what I mean? So... That's just one cool chord you can build right there. So the whole thing right there in standard tuning is five, eight, seven, six, five, five. Or if you can't bar it, if your hands aren't strong enough or you don't want to bar it in general, just go five, eight, seven. That's a more simpler version. You know what's really funny? Somebody just commented, I hear that chord in sulfur, the intro to sulfur. You're very close. It's actually a major six, I believe. Let me just double check. I gotta find it in standard. Yeah, there it is. So you just segue. What, people are gonna think I hired you to say that. Or like was like literally the most perfect transition. <laughs> so, so all right, all right. I'll call your bluff here. I'll, I'll you. Uh, I'll take the bait. So if I went five nine, now we have a more less sour sound with a six interval, meaning you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the minor six. Well, here's the major six. And yes, that is exactly, that is, you said it, I hear it in the intro because that's literally it. 
it's a major sixth interval and major sixth chord just detuned so it's a little bit easier you know in drop b it's like this but in a major tuning you have to spread it a little bit further you like that <laughs> so it's wait. yeah so it's like in standard it's three two i believe but going back to a it's just five nine look at that and now we have two other fingers to play with and what I would do, honestly, is just add that octave again. So I'm going five, nine, seven. Hear how much bigger and just like different that is compared to, it's just like, this is like so 1987, you know what I mean? Whereas now it's like, add, let's add a major six in there. I played that wrong the first time. You hear that? just sounds it's just different man it's just a different flavor so that is just something that is just if you're going up in relationship to that perfect fifth what happens if you go down now this is where it gets fun so if we start with our root our root fifth if we go if we go instead of five seven we go five six that's what's called the tritone and that is the most metalcore chord used in like 2006 2007 when they like parkway drive was tuned to drop b and they do breakdowns they use tritones i'll show you that once i get there once i switch out the the, the um the tunings of of my guitars you know i got the jim root strat and i got the seven string v behind me just to show you more examples that way i'm not just teaching everything in, in you know dad rock standard tuning i just have to teach it here but we'll translate it or transpose it excuse me on the lower tunings so if we just go five four or i'm sorry five six seven listen to that and if you don't want to build a chord if you want to arpeggiate the chord meaning just play the individual notes just go like this and if you go like this That's like literally everything that I play in my own original stuff. All my, my riffs, like the one I just did for the Jim Root demo, it's a, an, a, an alterated tonality, that, that sound I'm going for. All I'm doing is going back and forth between one and two from F to A. I'm sorry, F to B, excuse me, on the A string. And that's just a tritone right there. So again, back to A, it's just five, six. Pretty cool, right? Now, I'm gonna show you if I go one more step back the other way. I'm gonna show you what, um, what, uh, <laughs> pray for, oh yeah, a common used chord that you see a lot in um, one band in particular on their first album in their hit song. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna show it and I'm gonna see if you guys can get it. It's just a little fun. It, it'd be really, I'd be really impressed if you guys get it. I'll probably just play the song so you guys can hear it. But anyway, go back to our power chord. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the tritone. And we're going to go one step back a half step. So now we're going 5-5. Five, five. And now we're going to go put that octave back in. So now this chord is one of my favorite chords, and I'll name it for you. This one actually has a more traditional name. But the, the band I'm looking for is from like, the, they started in the early 90s, all right? And <laughs> I don't want to give it away too much, but it's, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, that's wrong. I played a variation of, of the chord progression, but I think you guys kind of already know what that is. I'm going to see if anybody guesses it. Uh oh, my stream went. My stream froze. Oh, no. Ben Eller, yeah, Ben Eller's the man, dude. That is, okay, you guys didn't guess it. Okay, chord, no, that's not chord, come on now. That is, that's Dream Theater, that's Pull Me Under. Wait, I always mess up. I keep wanting to go D, but it's B, so. So, the whole thing.
Those chords right there, that... That's such a Dream Theater thing. It's such a John Petrucci thing. And that actually has a name. It's called a suspended chord. And suspended means kind of like an unresolved sound. A, 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 kind of an open... Not unresolved, that's not the right word. Kind of an open sound. Um, suspended. You know, kind of thinking of like the word in like a real world sense. And all it is, it's the perfect fourth. And then the octave with the pinky or your ring finger if you want. Right there. And that chord is such a... Easy, the easiest replacement for just a plain old power chord. Yes, Mike, I am in standard tuning. I'm in standard for now, and then I'm going to switch it up again. Um, or not again. I'm going to switch up my tunings. Uh, I got three different guitars here that I'm going to show all of this stuff for. I'm just teaching it in standard just to speak one language, and I'll show how it all makes sense. Because nobody ever takes the extra step and teaches stuff in drop tunings. That's what I'm going to do. I just have to teach it with something that everybody at one point in time was familiar with. All right, so back to the suspended chord. It's just five, five, seven. So anytime you have a teacher or somebody that's teaching the guitar, you know, a teacher or a mentor or whatever, and you play this, just five, five in standard tuning or any standard tuning, they'll say more often than not, oh, that's not really a chord. And I would disagree. It's, it's not a traditional chord, but it's an interval and it's a perfect fourth. And a good way to think about it, the way I learned about it in school, a perfect fourth sound is the beginning of Here Comes the Bride. Here comes the bride. So. All right, pretty cool. So this is where I want to start to dive into a, the more complex stuff. I'm labeling all these spots on the fretboard. But now I want to like start to like really get the bigger stretch. So a lot of you guys see in my videos, like I'm doing all this, like I'm doing like a lot of these shapes and like like really messing around because you know i think i would like to think my my creativeness or my strength in my creativeness is certainly like my chord voicings um and especially in drop tunings like you'll see me doing a lot of this like i'll be playing melodies and leads as i'm playing the root note as well so i want to get there okay so now we have to talk about real quick what invert an inversion is and you hear this a lot in music and it has to deal with actually memorizing some stuff in music. And the thing you have to memorize, it's what's called the triads and the things that make up chords. So a chord, a basic chord in a traditional sense, just a random basic major or minor chord, is a root, a third, and a fifth. Root, third, fifth. And a major chord is root, third, fifth. Minor chord is root, minor, third, fifth. Nanobot, hey, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It means the world to me. Thank you. And you, you threw me off, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a root third fifth. Well, we know our perfect fifth. That's our fifth, right? Well, a power chord isn't major or minor because we were missing the third. So when everybody's playing a power chord, it's not major or minor. And that's why it's so easy for metal players, especially to gravitate towards them because they're easy to grab because they're not a full on fleshed out or, you know, just like a, a, a full on chord. It's just power chords, it's just root fifth. So it's easy and it's easy to grab them fast like when you're playing, you know, Master of Puppets. You know, it's, it's easy to, to throw those in there real quick. So now when you're talking about inversions, now we'd have to know what our root, our third and our fifths are and then flip them, all right? So stay with me. So I'm going to move to my A and my D string right now. 5-7. Same spot, just two strings higher. 5th fret, A string is a D. 7th fret, D string is an A because remember the octave. So now, in theory, this right here is a D power chord because D, E, F sharp, G, A. D, A. Root, 5th. Okay? We know this shape. We know this shape very well. We use that all the time in, in traditional metal. What would happen if I went back to that suspended chord right here? So wait a minute. This was an A, D, A, and a suspended fourth chord because A, B, C sharp, D, okay, and then the A underneath. 
So just, I'm gonna do this slow. Here's our A's. Here's our perfect fifth. Well, here's our perfect fourth now. And that's why it's called a suspended chord because suspended fourth means like that open sound using the fourth note of the scale that you're playing in or you know the chord that you're playing in hope that makes sense hope you guys get that so now if i go d a and then i go back to that a suspended chord well what is that i thought it was an a chord well it could also be called a d chord and this is where spellings of chords becomes really finicky and kind of fuzzy especially with the guitar Piano players, they make chords, and a lot of music theory is taught using the piano. That's how I learned. I'm not a piano player, but I learned on a piano, and I use it more or less as a tool rather than an instrument. So, as a piano player, you have ten hands, or <laughs> ten hands, you have ten fingers to flesh out a chord any way you want. Whereas a guitar player, you really only have four, or if you have giant Jimmy, fin Jimmy, Fendrix, Jimmy Hendrix fingers, you have five. Me, I don't have big hands. I have big palms, little fingers. So what I'm getting at is here, you can kind of have a little bit of leeway with your chord spellings and what you want to try to call a chord, all right? So this is a D power chord. But there's an A in the bass. Hear that? Here's D, A. But then I'm throwing the A on the bass. So a D power chord with an A on the bass is the same exact chord in spelling as an A suspended fourth. And that's a little confusing, but the idea is you as a guitar player, you know, we're playing metal, we're playing rock and roll. Who cares what anybody's saying? Like, we're not in school, we're not in class. Play whatever you want. And if you want to emphasize a D, like my chord progression's going uh, uh, C, D, it's a terrible chord progression, but C, D, and G, one, two, five. That's kind of bluesy. But if you want to use this as your D chord, man, it won't sound as strong as a D chord compared to this, but the D notes are in there. D and A, because D, E, F sharp, G, and A, all right? And so this is where the rules of rock and roll start to take over, and the rules of metal start to take over. It's like, man, who cares what anybody's saying in terms of like a traditional theorist? If you want to use this, this chord as your D, as long as you can convey it, and understand what's going on, who cares? Who cares what anybody says about your chord? It's your chord, it's your song, it's your riff. It doesn't have to always be 1000% perfect. Like I said, this isn't a piano. We only got with what we got, if that makes any sense. So I hope that makes sense in terms of inversions because it's the same triads, D, F sharp is the third, and then A. Well, we have our D and our A here in terms of power chords, D and A, and then we have another A here. Oops there make sense i hope so any questions any questions so far i see you guys blowing up the chat that's awesome i love your engagement i see you guys interacting with one another too that's really cool man any questions 10 hands yeah thanks man <laughs> don't laugh i only have three we're picking in lost my pinky to work oh dude i'm so sorry ricky well dude <laughs> i <laughs> you know i i i'm really sorry but that that makes you extremely unique as a player you know what i mean like that that it's kind of like the Tony Iommi thing, you know. If Tony Iommi lost his tip, if you told me Tony Iommi didn't lose his tips, we wouldn't have the heavy metal sound. So it's like I'm terribly sorry that happened. But what's interesting and what's really cool is I'm sure you've thought of creative ways to come up with new sounds and new new ideas with the hands you've been dealt. You know, the cards you've been dealt. You know, what I mean, I think that's 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 probably. I'd love to hear how you voice chords using using your left or right hand, your fretting hand. I think that'd be really cool, man. If you feel extra, if you feel extra sassy, you can still use a thumb on the high E to make a five string chord on the high E. Ah, yeah, there you go. Kind of like the Mark Morton thing. Mark Morton always has his hand. He's always has his thumb out like this. Ray, what string do I use? I use all six or seven if I'm on a seven string. What's the dirty chorus from Battery called? Gotta think of battery. So like, right? Like, 
See, it's like five, seven, five. I believe it's like something like that. I'm not too familiar with battery, but yeah, I, I, I'll get to that. I got it. I got it on my lesson plan here. Good question. Good question. I don't want to get too ahead. All right. Okay. So now I want to start to talk about my favorite chord now, my favorite metal chord that I use in literally all of my demos and all of my riffs. Like 90% of the time you guys will see me do this shape. And I'll start it really simply and then we'll start to break it down and it'll be more complex. I call it the floods chord. Five, seven, nine. That is my favorite sound in terms of a chord. I think it's the most beautiful, elegant, yet powerful tonality in any chord that I've ever found on a guitar. It sounds a little hippie-ish, but um, I love it, man. I really do. And why it's called the flood chord is because the outro of floods and the solo, like... You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the, the entire solo. Wait. I'm, not, you know, I'm butchering right now. I'm in standard tuning, but... That and this, the outro, like the... See that shape? It's just all that, that like claw looking thing. And I love that. I love that shape and I love this, this sound. So what is it? Let's call it, let's, let's give it a name. Well, there's, there's a traditional way a theorist would call it. And then there's a, a, a guitar player, how they would call it. So how I call it and how I think guitar players call it, it's called an, an add nine chord. All right. An add nine meaning you're adding a ninth from your root. So again, everything in music is comprised off of that silly little. You know, that silly little do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do is so critical for metal because Dimebag Daryl was using it. You know, it's in a different tuning, which I have just over there. If you be patient with me, we'll show how this all ties in. I promise you. Just hang tight, man. It's, I'm trying to crash course you all and in, in to unique metal chords, you know, in a short amount of time. So I just have to continue to explain it in standard. But it's a ninth, all right? It's a ninth. And it's a major, it's a major ninth. And I'll show you why. Let me turn down my gain so you can hear me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So remember when I was playing the, the two octave major scale? The ninth note of that entire thing I just ran up and down is this. And it's actually a B. This note right here is a B. And an easy way to think about that, well, if we go coast to coast one octave, and that's A, well, what's the next, if we keep repeating our notes then that logically has to be a b so music theory and chords is so <laughs> zach Rady, what's up man oh i i gotta i don't mean to interrupt everybody but rated zach he's got something super sick coming out uh he and i are working behind the scenes i can't wait to show you guys but anyway back to what i was talking about that's a ninth right there does that make sense here's our octave Here's our ninth. And then we just throw our perfect fifth in there. So it's not a C major nine. It's a C or it's a it's not a major it's not a major nine. It's just an add nine. And the difference, guys, I'll tell you this guys right now, the difference between you know what's a major nine versus an add nine, it's a little confusing, it's a little in depth. But a major nine would go root, third, fifth, seven, nine. What it looks hard about that on a guitar standpoint. There's five notes in there and we only have four fingers. So to compensate, guitar players come up with like tricks and they'll throw in the add nine, meaning they'll go root, fifth, ninth. So you're still getting that ninth sound, but you're negating the third as well as the seventh. 
But again, like I said 10 minutes ago, you as a guitar player, if you wanted to call this a major nine, in theory, it's pretty wrong. It would probably just be easier to call it an add nine. But again, guitar players, you have to compensate because of the limited amount of, you know, soldiers you have on the battlefield to pick out the notes you want to play. So, and it, like a piano player would certainly grab a major nine, root third, fifth, seventh, ninth. Whereas a guitar player would just probably grab root fifth, ninth, or maybe like root third, fifth, ninth, if they could voice that somehow, you know what I mean? So that's a little bit different. So this is just an add nine. And what's even cool about it, um, Trey from Gear Gods did a video on this years ago, showing some cool power chord shapes. He described that as two power chords st stacked on top of each other. That's a good way to think about it. So we go five, seven, and then we go seven, nine. And that E note is the bridge or the glue that holds those two power chords together. So pretty cool, right? So I want to take this shape a little bit further. I don't want to spell out all the different literal letter names, but I want to show you guys the shape. So we're going to take that same sus, sus four chord slash D power chord for um, second inversion. Real quick, I have to say it's a second inversion because we have an F. So <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting all excited. So the triads for D major, D, F sharp, A. All right. If our chord went F sharp, A, D, that's first inversion because F sharp is the next in line with is in the bass. But since our A is in the bass, that's the second inversion. A little confusing. If you get confused, just after the stream, you can always come back and just Google that or just listen to me say it again. So when we have the, the fifth in the bass, that's the second inversion. If we have the third in the bass, that's the first inversion. All right? So if we go ADA, well, what happens if we go ADA and then throw in on the ninth fret? That right there. So we have this add nine shape right here. We're going five, seven, nine, A, D, G string. Such a pretty, listen, that's so pretty. And it's actually an E because here's an E and then here's an E. And I, all right, I'll just go and spell it all out for you because it, it'll blow your mind. It's pretty cool. If I could fret the whole thing. So right there we have an A, a D, an A, and an E. So we have, we have our root, we have our fourth, we have our fifth, and we have another fifth. So root, fourth, root, fifth. Well, what would happen if I did something crazy and I took a bar and I barred this whole thing? So I'm going five, five, seven, nine, five, five. Again, one of my favorite chords to play, kind of hard to play, but it's a lot of fun. So listen. That is such a sick sound. And what we're getting at is it's just, this is just one giant A chord, a whole bunch of intervals. I'm gonna label them for you. A, D, A, E. This is also an E. So we got two E's in there, and then we got a high A from the high E string when we borrow it. So it's. So the really cool thing that gives this chord the unique sound is these two E's repeating or um, not harmonized together, but they're the same note repeated between the G string and the B string. So it's really sick, man. Just that's just a massive wall of sound. And again, it's so much better than, they're both an A chord. There's just so, there's just so much more behind that. And then if you're like recording and you have two of those going at the same time, or if you're a live band and you're in a lower tuning or whatever, and you want to like have a sick open chorus, like, dude, it's so much more refreshing and so much more unique compared to like just a regular, you know, root fifth power chord, like the Scorpions or the Ramones were using. You know what I mean? It's just so much more refreshing just having a... 
something unique. And again, that's why I bring up Mark Holcomb from Periphery. Because this, this sounds a lot like Periphery. You know, within reason. But, you know, he's doing it with his thumb. And he's kind of like fretting something similar. I've seen him doing his own, his, um, you know, his lessons or whatever. His um, clinics, that's the word I'm looking for. And he's doing something similar like this. Like, he doesn't even really know theory. But he kind of does because he kind of knows what he likes. And he's just mapping out intervals with unique power chords and unique metal chords. You know what I mean? So any questions on that stuff? I'm going to take a, take a swig of water, man. I've been talking for about an hour now. Any questions on that stuff? We're just about done with teaching everything in standard. Now what I want to do is the fun part is like strap on a new guitar if there's no questions. And show you guys how this all pertains to drop tuning in metal, okay? Any questions? Is there any way to do something similar with a bar chord? Little lady hands here. <laughs> um, in regard, I'm sorry, in regards to what? In regards to, um, and I, like, in, terms of, in terms of that last shape I was doing? Um, I mean, that is, a, that is a bar chord. I mean, this is essentially a bar chord. It's just really tricky. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm literally barring here, but if I wanted to make this simpler, I would just remove this this uh, pinky finger right here because this note is already tucked in on the bar here. So a simple way to fix that is just remove it. And now we're just going five, five, seven, five, five, five. And now this is actually a minor chord because of that minor third here. Way that's a minor third because if I go back to my bar chord, it's a little complex, but here's a bar chord, major bar chord. Here's my major third. Well, now here's my minor third. Flatten it. Back to that original shape, five, five, seven, five, five, five. So, yes, okay, exactly that. So, to make this major, I would go five, five, seven, six, five, five. And basically, that's just a regular bar chord, just without your ring finger here. So rather than five seven seven six five five, this is five five seven, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how I do it. I got a super chat from Mark Rodriguez six six six. Hell yeah, man! That's the most metal super chat I've ever gotten in my life. Thank you, thank you. Hey Ray, thanks for the stream. Unfortunately, work starts here in thirty minutes, but keep doing what you're doing and stay safe. Hey, thanks so much, brother. Do your best at work. Just knock it out. <laughs> Enjoy it best you can. Um, whatever that entails, man. I hope it's I hope it, it goes smoothly and it goes by fast. Um, this will be up on the channel once I'm done. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support and your participation. I appreciate you. And, um, you know, just thanks, man. It, I, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. Okay. I agree with you, Ray, but Momstein did it during the 80. Ah, okay. Okay. Every, <laughs> LOL, everyone hating standard. I, I was that, I was that guy. I was in standard. I, I, I'm so I was a hater in on standard, but I had to learn it in standard in school and now it just makes So much sense it really does and now what I'm about to do is I think it's time. It's time. Let's do it I'm gonna switch out a guitar. I'm gonna go to drop B a tuning that nobody talks about in theory I'm gonna do C sharp standard and drop B because they're both interchangeable basically just the alteration of one string, okay? Okay. That's more like it, you know what I mean? That's something we're familiar with. I don't want to play the whole riff. I don't want to get demonetized. Okay, so we're in C sharp standard, and that's probably my favorite like metal sounding standard tuning. Um, you know, and what it what's really important about it is this is actually just drop B, but you know, just in the, it's it's drop B standard tuning C sharp standard C sharp F sharp B E G sharp C sharp. 
And so now, the big takeaway, the thing that nobody teaches, or very little few, very few people teach this information, is how to take everything that I just spent the last 55 minutes on and apply it to what we like, and that is metal, and that is drop tuning. The answer is so easy, man. It's so much simpler than people make it out to be. For example, that's a power chord, right? 5-7. I'm not even going to name the names, first off, because I don't want to recalibrate my brain. I was spending everything in standard. I don't want to misspeak. But more importantly, the shapes stay the same. They don't change. Every standard tuning, the relationships between the notes are in st they're how do, I want to say this, I want to use my words carefully. No matter what standard tuning I'm in, the relationship between the notes are the same. The literal letter names will be different. For example, this is not an A anymore, and this is not an E anymore. I'm in 5-7, by the way. This guitar doesn't have any fretboard markers, which is kind of inconvenient, especially for somebody like me who's trying to like learn theory. So I'm at 5-7 right now. I'll, I'll try to stay grounded here in 5-7. But this is not an A, and this is not an E. But it's still a power chord. We know that. And just like if we keep altering that perfect fifth on my pinky, if we go up a half step, that's that minor sixth sound, that sour sound. And if we take it all the way down to the first fret, Like, <laughs> that is like the sickest riff I've ever wrote <laughs> in the last couple weeks. And like, I'm not even trying, just. <laughs> Nobody steal that riff, I just wrote that. <laughs> That's so sick. <laughs> anyway, see what I'm doing right there? I just took that minor six power chord shape Here's my root fifth, minor sixth. I don't really like it there. Let's try it somewhere else on the fretboard. <laughs> like, it sounds so sick. And all I'm doing is I'm just using the intervallic relationships that I just literally spent the last hour on in standard tuning. All right? So let's keep going. Let's, let's ride this wave. Somebody brought it up about a half hour ago. The sulfur sound. Well, guess what? That's that major six. Here's minor six. Here's major six. Go way to check it and go back to your major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the sixth note of the major scale. Put your root in there, play a power chord. You got sulfur. I'm not gonna play the riff because I actually got demonetized playing sulfur in the uh, hair tie video. The record companies are after me, man. They steal my money. They steal my ad money because I play their slip out riffs. So I can't play the whole thing. But that sound, it's a major sixth. And I would like to think the majority of people don't know that. Don't know what this chord is. Or, I'm sorry. They don't really know that. And I'm going to show in a second doing a drop tuning because we're going to spend some time on drop tuning. But it's just a major six. It's just a major six interval. All right. Let's go back to the tritone. So here's our power chord. Now let's go five, six instead of five, seven. Again, just more heavy shit, man. <laughs> if we go one, two. Like, that's the sickest sound I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, just not, I'm, I'm just messing around with the intervals. I'm not trying to come up with any sort of like crazy thing. I'm literally just, just like being like, all right, here's a power chord. Let's just go like this. And like, <laughs> that's it, man. That's all, that's all like theory is. And that's all unique chord voicings are. All right. And so if I go back to my, my notes here, one thing I did fail to mention and it's an interval I forget, forgot to mention in standard, but I'll show you here now. It's a really simple concept, but I want to I speak on it. So we'll go 
on the, let's just call these standard tuned strings. So E and D string. That's octaves. We know that, right? I mean. Well, what would happen if we took that octave and flattened it and went five, six, E and D? Listen to that. That's a major seventh. And so you hear this a lot in music, the major seventh, a major seventh this, a major seventh that. The major seventh is one half step away from the octave. And that is what's called the leading tone in music, all right? And in a traditional sense of music, it's called the leading tone. And leading means it wants to go somewhere. It has this sense, this, this pull, this energy between the root note and this note, the seventh, the major seventh. It just wants to go somewhere. It wants to, it wants to go to where it, our ears want it to go, which is the octave. So listen, what's on it? So go. Hear that? I'll try to, I'll, I'll turn on my gain so you can hear. I got, I'm, got the orange rock river blasting, but if I go. Like we're, we're at our home base, we're back home, so. And it's called a major seventh because it's the seventh note in the major scale. Again, going back to that major scale that is so important. There's our seventh right there. Well, what, I'm gonna play the, I'm gonna play the major scale. I'm gonna go to the octave. And I'm gonna play it again, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go to the octave. I'm just gonna hang on that seventh. Listen. Okay. Now well, listen again. Ah, like it drives you nuts, man. Like your brain and your mind and your ears are like, come on, let's just let's get to where it needs to go. Let's get to that leading tone. Let's get to the octave. Let's get back to, to square one, the root, all the above. So when you add that major seventh sound into a chord, if I'm just going five, muting the A string, and then D six. It creates this sense of dissonance because if I were to resolve it, it would go like this. So a sick metal riff you can write is doing what I just did, but do it on the lower strings. Just go. Like, I, I do that all the time in all my demos and my originals, man. Just bouncing back and forth between the major seventh and the root note. And it just sounds... It makes you get that face. Like, I can't not do that face. <laughs> like, I'm just messing around. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... These intervals just bring out a certain um, uh, emotion, you know what I mean? A certain uh, uh, level of ignorance and, and just like, just you want to open up the pit or something, you know what I mean? Like imagine playing this in front of 80,000. All I'm doing is just bouncing back and forth between a tritone and a major seventh. Just those, those intervallic relationships that are evil, all right? So... I just remembered I forgot to mention um, the battery chords from Metallica. The, I, I, I don't, I'm not too familiar with battery, but it's like these chords right here. Well, one's a minor third and one's a major third interval. And an easy way to check that is if this is a perfect fourth, five, five. If I just go from the fourth back a half step, that's a major third right there. So a major third is do, re, mi, mi. So, so let's say we're in standard tuning right now. A D note right here, well, this would be an F sharp. 
so, and then the same thing would be here. Let's see if I'm in standard tuning, this is D, this is an E. So then that would mean that this is a D as well. So that's a minor third. Or no, that's a major third, I'm sorry. Because E, F sharp, G, right there. So they're both major third power chords, if you will. They're just major third intervals. They just play differently because of the whole steps and half steps in music. It's kind of confusing, but these two chords, although they're different shapes, have the same exact intervallic relationship between the notes and the root note. All right? Hope that makes sense. So now, let's, tu let's down tune, all right? We've spent enough time in standard tuning. Now let's get to the fun stuff, okay? So, hey, you're welcome. I'm sorry, I, sorry I took so long on the battery cords. I, you know, I, I spaced. I'm sorry. My apologies. Um, I'm glad I got it done, though. So now, we're in drop tuning. This is where drop tuning becomes really fun and becomes really applicable, obvious, obviously, for metal, um, and even more so applicable for creating chords, and there's a reason why. So, this makes it easier to grab chords, all right? And that's why drop tuning is so ideal for metal, because like I said about, I don't know, like an hour ago, give or take, you know, we grab uh, power chords in metal because we're playing, we're playing fast, you know, we're doing this and that, and the third, you know, we're trying to play fast paced. We don't have time to really flesh out chords and like, you know, really get all intricate. We have to like get in, get out, like master of puppets, it's just all power chords because it's at 212 BPM. We're trying to, we're trying to move, you know what I mean? So that's why down tuning is so convenient because that power chord shape is as, is as easy as just an open chug. That's just an open, that's an open power chord. And I think we all know that, you know, I mean, the B string to an F sharp is a perfect fifth. B, C sharp, D, F sharp, wait, wait, <laughs> B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. Okay, I forgot the E, yeah. B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. So root, fifth, root, fifth, B, F sharp, power chord. And then the octave, the string below the F sharp is at the octave of the B. So it's B, F sharp, B. Just one big giant power chord. And we know that, and that's why a lot of metal riffs are like, I have to play it wrong. Don't, I'm not playing before I forget incorrectly. I'm doing it on purpose. It's power chords. They're easy to grab. We know that. So now, what's really fun, and again, that's why I, I love drop tuning so much and I love understanding chords so much, is because everything that I just spent so much time on, it's just so much easier to grab when you have basically like your own little capo in, you know, in your toolbox right here, ready to go at all times. You know, you have, a, a, you have the ability to create a chord using three strings with just one finger. Now you have three other fingers to grab as many other intervals as you want. All right, so let's just start labeling stuff out, just labeling all the intervals. So if we go root, fifth, root. Well, there's a lot of stuff a lot of stuff, a lot of intervals we can grab left or right, one fret, all right? Easy one to grab, tritone. I kind of already demonstrated it, but I'm gonna show you how to demonstrate it in um, a drop tuning. So remember standard tuning, a tritone was like this? Well, guess what, now it's flipped, all right? Here's tritone and standard, but we're in drop tuning. Now that shape is flipped, because here's the power chord. Well, what's a power chord flattened one half step? Try to. So if we keep going down the shape, we get all the way to the first fret. It's just one open. And remember when I said power, uh, Parkway Drive uses this shape all the time in like 2006? Like this is like the most quintessential metalcore breakdown riff. It's just tritones. It's just a tritone. And again, an easy way to figure that out is if you take, you know, this string right here, power chord, just flatten the fifth, 
you know, you run out of room. Now you got to leave it open. Just go. Sounds like the Ghost Inside or Parkway Drive from like 2008. You know what I mean? It's like the most overused breakdown chord. And all it is is just a tritone. And so like right now I'm just labeling the basics, but the idea is I want you guys to get a, take away from this stream is like just a little, being a little bit more, um, if you haven't already, be a little bit more um, musically inclined to be able to call these chords something and other than, oh, I don't know, like one open, it sounds heavy. Rather than saying, rather than that, you could say, okay, let's play a C tritone chord, you know, C, F sharp, something like that. Just a little bit more musically inclined, a little bit more intelligent, as opposed to just kind of being like the cliche metal caveman that's like, I don't know, it's like, I just do that and like, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure if that was a caveman or Rocky Balboa, but anyway, <laughs> you guys get the idea. <laughs> All right, so let's continue to label them. So now, if this is a perfect fifth, this is a minor sixth. That's that sour note. Well, here if we go one more, now all of a sudden we're playing sulfur. That chord right there, and that's why, you know, I was playing it in standard like this. Well, now it's so much easier because it's just two frets up. So now it's just... Again, I'm not playing it incorrectly on, by accident. I'm doing it on purpose so I don't get demonetized from the Warner Brothers group or Sony or whoever decides to take my money from my Slipknot riffs. They like physically, just a side note, they physically, they watch my videos and then they pick out segments of riffs that I play just long enough that they can consider to be melodies of songs and then they demonetize it. So that's what I've been dealing with lately. So I have to play the riffs incorrectly, but I can show you... Um, you know, just the, the nature of the riffs and like the tonalities of them. All right. So now let's get to something, let's get to something a little bit more complex. So what if I went like this? Let's say if I went five, five, seven. All right. Now I'm sure some of you could get this, but I'm just going to label it real quick. This is that add nine shape. All right. And remember when I said that like the flood shape was like this. Well, now since we're in a drop tuning, our low B string just goes up. And now look, now we're just barring it, and then we still have our ninth right here. So all of a sudden we're playing floods. And now we're actually really in the floods tuning. So watch this. So rather than doing that add nine shape, I could just borrow it and just play that riff. Pretty cool, huh? It's a lot easier to grab as opposed to just doing like, you know, this all the time. You can just have a bar chord, just have that little pinky just hanging out in left field. And then it's just a lot easier to grab that add nine shape. So what would happen if I went like this? I use this all the time. I use this shape all the time. I use it in a song called uh, The Final Waltz. One of my favorite riffs I've written in a long time. Anyway, all that's going on there is we have, again, just the simple stuff that we've been doing, except, except now we're in a drop tuning. So let's just call this a D, okay? For the sake of argument, we're in, we're in a standard tuning. This D note and this D note. These are the octaves. So basically, all you're doing is just adding root, fifth, root, fifth. So it's root, fifth, root, fifth. So it's just a big giant power chord. This right here is nothing but a big giant power chord. Just root fifth, root fifth. And then what I was doing right there is I was moving the pinky back and forth, just creating a little melody right here. So I'm going from a perfect fifth to a minor sixth. Now these are actually what are called compound intervals, which are past the octave, the one octave. Now we're in the second register, but the idea is this is just a big giant power chord. And then you could even just bar the whole damn thing.
So all I'm doing is five, 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 seven, five, five. Or we can get super creative and go five, five, seven, nine, five, five. Hear how sick that is, dude? <laughs> like, that's so sick compared to just. Nah, man, it's just like, let's add something cool to it. That sounds like um, Gauze by, uh, not Gauze. Is it Gauze by Deftones? I can't stop. I forget, I think it's gauze if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, just, you know, just playing around with the intervals in, in the sense of a power chord. Um, so that was in drop B slash C sharp. Last tuning I'm going to grab is a pretty common metal tuning and is honestly my favorite metal tuning because of, it just makes the most sense to me, okay? So let's switch that around. Oh, put another ding in this guitar. As you can see, this thing gets beat up just because of me just going on a daily basis. Oh, okay. Ah. I love this guitar, but it's actually giving me problems. It's uh, the output jack's a little, no pun intended, jacked up. It's like not sitting right. I, got, I probably have to replace it, but um, that's just, it's probably just me from having my right leg banging into it all the time. Okay, so now, I'm in B standard, I'm gonna drop it down to drop A. Eventually. <laughs> So, drop A is my favorite metal tuning, and it took me a long time to figure out why it was and how to use it and how to like bridge the gap, because I was always doing this, all right? I was always doing this. I would always play metal and drop B. Drop B was always my favorite. It still kind of is in a way, on a six string especially. So I'd always play metal. But then I would also play standard tuning. Like I was when I was going to school, I'd have to play like jazz and classical. And I was always in standard tuning. So like my conundrum was kind of what I was just doing in drop B is like, okay, I'd have standard tuning memorized. Okay, roger that, dude. Sick. But then like I'd come home and I'd be in drop B on a six string and I'd be like completely lost. And I wasn't bridging that gap between music traditional music theory and you know classical music if you will traditional music and metal and it wasn't until i figured out how to use a seven string to bridge that gap and i think most of you guys know what i'm about to say but you know i don't know why i was so stubborn to not do this for such a long time but a seven string in drop a is just e to e with a low a so you have a standard six string. Gotta make sure I don't play the riff. <laughs> I don't wanna get demonetized. I'm paranoid, man, I'm paranoid. But I have a standard six string. So everything that I was doing on the Les Paul an hour ago is all right there. And then now guess what? I have a drop A, a low A for funsies for just creating ignorant riffs or being a little bit musically inclined. Whatever I want to choose, I have the bo best of both worlds. If I don't want to think too much about theory, I'll just... Or um, what's my song, uh, Six Years, Two Hearts? That's that there's theory involved in there, but I'm not really I'm I'll be honest, I'm not really thinking about theory when I'm doing that. That's just like fun, you know what I mean? Like that's just like what I like to do. I like to create sick riffs. But okay, 
Roger that. Let's say now in that in one of my songs, I have a chord progression, and it goes, you know, I don't know, A, B, uh, I think it's E right there, right? A, B, and C. I got so many tunings in my head. A, B, C, D, E, yeah. Okay, so I'm going A, B, E. Terrible chord progression. Again, more bluesy, one, two, five. Um, let's go one, two, four, five. I don't know, I'm just making up stuff, just for the sake of argument. But my, what I'm trying to say is, okay, that right there is an A major. So now, play an A major. Okay, well guess what, I can play an A major right here. Or I could play the relative minor. Which is, in fact, F sharp in A major. mess around with all my modal shapes. Here's B Dorian. Back to A major. Pentatonics, F sharp. And it's all in key with this. Oops. <laughs> trying to solo and, and, and jet at the same time but the key takeaway is i'm playing in key but i'm also heavy and so that's what i always say like on my on my uh, q and a's and my my um you know, just anytime anybody asks me, hey, what's the, what's, what should I do next? I've been playing for a while. What should I do? I'm always like, dude, learn the fretboard in standard. And everybody's like, oh, but like, I don't want to. I don't know why I have to learn it. And dude, it's this. It's everything that I just did. I went from standard tuning to drop A and it all makes sense. I don't have to constantly, like every time I put, okay, I'm in drop C now. Now I have to literally recalibrate everything. And all the years that I've been playing, you know, let's say A major. is completely out the door and it's completely useless if I'm in a, a new tuning and a new, um, yeah, new tuning with a new guitar. But if I have a seven string, I still have this. You know, I still have that in my tool bag, but I also have like, I don't know. I still have more musically inclined ideas, if that makes any sense. So go back to going back to chords. What I just did in drop B, I can just do exactly in drop A. The relationships don't change. The intervals don't change. Just the letter names change. The frets now have new letters slash note names, but the intervals, the distance between this fret and this fret, doesn't matter if I'm in standard, or doesn't matter if I'm in drop D or drop A, this will always be the same interval, which is in fact a minor ninth. <laughs> so yeah, if that makes any sense. So that's pretty much the majority of what I've got for tonight. And if there's any questions, I'm going to hop into the chat right now. So you guys blowing up the chat, which is super sick, man. Um, you know, I've covered a lot. I've covered about, God, almost a semester's worth of chord knowledge tonight in about an hour. So it's broad strokes. And I do want to keep, I want to keep everything that I have for my, my uh, students, you know, special to them because, you know, they're, they're signing up and they, they will, they're getting something out of me. It's a little bit more personal. So I don't want to like give away what I'm teaching for free. You know, I just want to I want to help people out, but at the same time, still keep the integrity of what I'm teaching to the people that signed up for it. You know what I mean? I think that's fair. So, let's see here. Hey, just wanted, hey Ray, just want to say hi to you. It's really sweet of you to share your talent with your audience. Hey, dude, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. I can say the same thing to you, man. You're a phenomenal guitar player, phenomenal slipknot advocate, and you blow my doors off. So, I appreciate you all the same, man. 
You should be able to go to his page, bro. I'm sure he'll upload this later. How, oh, okay, how can I listen to this again after the live stream is done? Yeah, so this stream will be done. I got, I'm still going on right now. I still want to talk to you guys. I'm not going anywhere. Um, but I'm taking a break from teaching because, you know, that was a lot. And I'm going to put this V down because it's, it's heavy. <laughs> um, but yeah, after this is done, you know, this will be up for you guys to, um, to uh, revisit and, 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 you know, check back in on and pause it and, you know, et cetera. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to negate any problems about things you don't understand right now for you to get, and I'm giving the opportunity to answer questions that you guys have. Um, so if you guys have anything that, that you want to ask me that I just covered, by all means, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'd rather you get it from me now, as opposed to being like, trying not, trying to get a hold of me when I'm not, you know, focused on this right now. Um, okay, let's see here. Is there any way to do something similar with a bar chord, a little lady hands here? Okay, okay, that's that's an older one. Okay, so we're, we're ways away now. Oh my god. We're way behind Ray. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, <clears throat> about those chords, how do you find a good way to use it in a context of a full song, like use the chords or ch on choruses or verses, bridges, etc.? Okay. Um, so, I'm trying to just Fight, figure out what you're trying to ask exactly. So, like, how to use... Okay. Let me grab... Let me grab my, my axe. It's back. <laughs> that was short-lived. Short break. So, if I'm thinking, like, of a chorus, I try to think of, like, something as big as possible. You know, no less than, like, an add nine chord. But if I really want to get big... Well, that's not right. And I just think the general rule of thumb is like a chorus, you want more strings to be engaged, you know, like literally played. But a verse, verse I try to just delve into like arpeggiating intervals, meaning like, you know, just like getting. I'm just, all I'm doing is just bouncing back and forth between intervals right there. And I would never really want to do that in like a big chorus because like the chorus will get washed out. A chorus is is meant for like the vocals more often than not or the lead whatever if you're an instrumental to be the focal point of the chorus and the the instruments are supposed to be like uh the accompaniment of the chorus you know what i mean it's kind of like just like songwriting structure like this is like like uh pull me under you know what i mean like You know, that's, that's, those are really simple chords, and John Petrucci is not, like, whittling all over and soloing. So, uh, to answer your question, as it pertains to intervals and building chords, the simpler the better for the verse is my approach, and then for, like, choruses or bridges. Bridges are pretty big. Um, I use more strings. But, again, it's all about what the song needs. I know, I, however you write your song is up to you, and you're the artist, and that goes back to what I said. Like, as long as you can convey and justify what you're doing on the guitar or any instrument who cares what anybody thinks about what you're doing it's your song it's your art you know what i mean because i'm tight with jim i don't know what that's about <laughs> did you get did jim give you that guitar right nah man i bought that thing and then i modified it the hell out of it myself i bought it about two years i bought the body two years ago bought the neck two and a half years ago with the black strat and then um i swapped them out oh yeah somebody answered that for me sorry about that not a huge metal guy myself but i've learned a lot from the band strung out they shred <laughs> never heard of them the dean here we go playing authentic yeah your guitar has an extra string nice hell yeah it does um okay so six nine five absolutely metal should play lydian scale solo on this riff wonder seven v silver suit I'm not sure what that all means that's a better it's, a, it's diving into modes i don't want to talk about modes because that'll that'll be here for another hour and a half you know what i mean the brown note, <laughs> squealy, dude. The silver burst is sexy. Yeah, thanks, man. I play drop F, use bass strings on my guitar. Hell yeah, demonetized. Probably, probably when I was playing a riff. Hey, Ray, question. Here we go. When you write for low tunings, where do you keep the bulk of the bass line? Octave up, same or down? Um, so I always keep it down. I've learned as I get older, I don't like anything lower than drop A. Um, I used to have an eight string. I think I had two eight strings actually. Um. And when I was writing for an H-string, I kept it same octave. But now, now I just, I, I always, I always go low. I, I always go low. I think, I think a low bass is super sick. 
And in my honest opinion, in metal, I really don't really ever think a bass should be higher than the guitar. Unless you have a very virtuosic, is that a word? Virtuosic bass player. Like um, the cat from Ginger, I forget his name, Eugene from Ginger. Like he's a phenomenal bass player and he's always up in the upper register and he's doing like leads with the bass. That's a different exception. But in terms of like just holding it down, I always go octave lower. But I don't go lower than A ever. Like this is as low as I've, I've, I've gone in about a year and a half. I don't, go, I don't like to go lower because I don't like to go lower because then again, it's just like it's it all perfect example. When I had an eight string, I was in drop E. I'd be like, oh, this is perfect for a theory. Three E's, you know, how hard could it be? But every time I picked up an eight string, I'd just do this. Like, I would just write the same 2009 generic gent riff. And um, so I was like, I had to, I had just, it just wasn't my style. It wasn't for me. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't ever play anything lower than drop A. Because drop A is as low as I think I can personally go to stay musical before it turns into, I don't know, something that doesn't really inspire me. The pinch harmonics are on point. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. That's a... Uh, it's like the best thing I'm good at on the guitar. It's like my thing. I, uh, it's like my gimmick, you know what I mean? <laughs> I appreciate that. Sometimes Ray speaks while you're still enlisted. Sometimes Ray speaks while you're still enlisted. Roger that. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, my military background sometimes escapes when I uh, run out of words to say. You're right, you're right. Play 66987 at drop A. Now it's major chord and sounds. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if that would work. I'm not really sure what you're saying there. Um, music theory, thumbs up, horns up, yeah, sounds like to be continued, and sulfur, come on, Ray, we all know you really want to play some ska, thank you, Ray, thank you, King Beard Designs, <laughs> oh god, what are you doing here, Ray rocks, you're, you rock, gauge do I use, all right, seven string, okay, I'm gonna answer this one more time, guys, I don't know why you guys fascinate over my string gauge, drop B, 11 to 54, sometimes it's 11 to 56, Drop A, 10 to 46, and then like a 68 or so, whatever I can find, basically, 68 to 74. And that's literally all I use. And then re regular standard tuning and drop D, 10 to 46. All right? So guys that are watching, guys and gals that are watching, um, please, if you see that in the chat from now on, just please relay the information. Uh, yeah, and DR strings. Thank you, Micah. Very good. I, don't, I used to use Ernie Ball, but I used DR because, I don't know, my, uh, my sergeant, one of my sergeants, one of my... Um, that's subordinates. I forget the opposite of a subordinate. Anyway, my boss, basically. My first line that I had to talk to, he always used DR when he was a guitar player. And um, he always used DR, so I just like, kind of followed in suit, you know what I mean? Hey, the House of Masks is here. AJ, what's up, brother? So, AJ, I'm, I'm, I know you're super bummed that I just you just missed out on my entire hour and 20-minute lesson of talking about music theory and how Slipknot has music theory behind it. But um, I'm going to check out your Sid Wilson mask video, and I'm going to text you back as soon as I'm done with this. We were texting, and I got caught up <laughs> doing this, so I'm sorry, man. Everybody, subscribe to the House of Masks, one of the sickest channels on YouTube. Um, seriously, go, go subscribe. Or at least check it out, man. Just don't take my word for it. Check it out for yourself. It's such a sick channel. Um, have you ever heard of and Andromeda? Obviously not. Andromeda by Macedon. The chords... And that song really reminded me of that sulfur chord. No, I haven't heard. I don't. I don't. I don't mess with Mastodon too much. I'll have to check it out though, because Colin's one of my students, and I owe it to him. So, Colin, we'll talk offline. I got you, brother. Um, what's your least favorite guitar I own? Ooh, good question. Very good question. That's actually a really solid question. Nobody ever asked me that. Least favorite that I own? Oh man, that's ho That's really hard to answer, dude. The Jim Root Telly's in the in the running, um, just because it's like so Jim Root, and it's like, it's like, it's like, it's just like so him. You know what I mean? It's like oh, it's solely his guitar, and it's like I try to be as, I try to be as unique as possible. I.e. this thing, and even this thing. Nobody has the guitar that looks like this. Nobody has this Strat other than me. You know, I have a, I have the most unique one I think in my opinion. Um, and I might put the Jazzmaster neck on it to get the block inlays. That'd be sick. Um, but yeah, the, the Jim Root Telly's in the running. I don't hate it, but um, I still own the Glary guitar. That's still here. 
but I won't say that. Um, I don't know. I, I have them. For, I have them all for a reason. You know what I mean? So I'd probably just say Jim Root Telly. I don't hate it, but it's like so Jim Root that it's like it's not me. It's like the only time I play that guitar is when I'm playing Slipknot, like solely Slipknot. You know what I mean? And and I have to be very careful. Like I love Slipknot and I love Jim and I love Mick and I love that content, but I'm I don't want to pigeonhole myself. I'm passionate about it, but I don't want to make it solely everything that I do on this channel. Um, kind of like what Ola England does. Like, he's the dime bag guy on YouTube, but he does everything, or he does a lot, and that's how I'm trying to approach it. Like, I'm trying to use my Slipknot content sparingly, and whenever I play that Telecaster, it's, like, only for Slipknot stuff, if that makes any sense. Very good question, though. That's very hard to, um, hard to answer. I hate H.E. Good. There you go. Somebody gets it. Strat is thick. Thanks so much. Do you ever watch... Balsart videos. The guitars he makes by hand are so no beautiful. They gave me new appreciation for the instrument. No, nah, dude, I've never actually seen that. I have some homework to do then, apparently. I'm so sorry I don't know that. I'm sorry, man. I have never seen that. Everybody go subscribe to the House of Masks. Your dad's Les Paul is my favorite. It was my favorite, one of my favorites, until the damn headstock broke. And then, uh, yeah, I just never got it repaired. Because now this happened and now we're stuck. Now it's like, I can't fix it. So that's a bummer. I almost don't even want to get it fixed. Because like, I don't want to, I don't know. It's like, want to just, I'm like so scared to even mess with it. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just like, it just snapped, dude. It's just like, I, 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 um, I forget what happened. It fell somewhere, but like very, like this far off the ground. This was like two months ago. It fell off this far off the ground and it snapped. So it's like, it puts such a damper on it that I don't even want to like, if I like don't think about it, it didn't happen type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to mess with it. So, um, yeah. Are you still liking your Kiesel? I did like it, but the, the pickups don't, don't gel with me. I thought the Beryliums would be, um, would be solid, but they just don't work for me. Um, so I might get something, something else might be coming from Kiesel. I'm not sure though. Mesa Dual Rec or Rock Verb if you could only take one on tour? Rock Verb, for sure. What about Ernie Ball? Man, JP15. It's a solid guitar, man. So I tell you what, guys. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm contemplating ending the stream and then hopping right back on. But I'm also thinking about just staying on because I, I, I don't want to turn this into a Q&A about anything. Um, I want to keep this solely about music theory. So I'm going to keep everybody focused, including myself. If you guys have any questions about anything I covered in the past 90 minutes, please ask. If not, um, I'm probably just going to end the stream and I'll probably just hop right back on. All right. AJ's asking me questions now, so I got to answer. Uh, oh, my stream froze. There we go. If you weren't in a guitar hero, if I wasn't in a guitar hero, come on now. What instrument would I, would I be committed to? I've always wanted to play the drums. I think double bass drums, double bass breakdowns are super sick. So uh, that's what I would do, man. <laughs> um, all right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to hop off the stream. I'm going to hop right back on, all right? And then we'll, we'll have some fun. We'll jam out. I'll record some stuff, and then uh, I'll be right back. So don't go anywhere. Later, guys.